name's Zoe, and this is... Grampy Bob, and we live in Ontario, Canada. We watch T-J-V every day. Trucker Josh, thumbs up. Interstate 24 in Kentucky. Left my banjo at home. I am ill prepared to be in Kentucky. So we just left Paducah, Kentucky. That's where we spent the night last night. We didn't even say goodnight to you guys. It was such a long day. I literally had about six minutes left on my clock when I pulled into the Southern Pride Travel Plaza. But we had a really good sleep and today's a new day, a new page try to be a little bit of a better person than we were yesterday. I want to get around this Mr. Beacon transport here, but every time I try to pull out to pass him, he finds his accelerator pedal. Funny how that happens, eh? It's like that everywhere. <laughs> so we're headed south still. We're going down to Ellabel, Georgia. It's a day's drive from here. 962 kilometers or 600 miles. So we'll be there late tonight and we'll be delivering this freight tomorrow morning. Uh, we got these underground fuel tanks that are going to a Love's Travel Plaza down here. Came all the way from Edmonton, Alberta. That was a uh, four and a half day drive. Five day drive if you don't want to push yourself too hard. All right, Mr. Beacon. Mr. Beacon, thank you for letting me get this far. Don't speed up again, please. Last time I got this far, he decided he wanted to go faster. So far, he's being nice. Like, cruise control is an amazing thing. Like, I'm so glad we have cruise control. Whoever invented cruise control deserves a pat on the back. All we gotta do is just get everybody on the road to realize that they have cruise control. And then this world is a better place. Tennessee. Isn't this the home of the Grand Ole Opry? 
Man, I haven't been here in years. Actually, wait, did we go through here on our way down to our honeymoon? I'm not sure. Whoa, 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 people, 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 people. Whoa. Whoa. Take her easy. You know, one thing I have forgotten that I have re-realized. Driving habits are a little different in the like southern United States or like this part of the United States than where I'm from in Canada and you know Minnesota, North Dakota, northern states and stuff. Driving habits are a lot more aggressive. 400 meters, keep to the left on I-24 East, I-40 East. People are a lot more impatient driving on the highways around, like in, in this part of the country, in my opinion. Like, I've been doing this for well, almost 10 years now. And I forgot about that, and it sort of shocked me again. It was a little bit of culture shock on the highway. People are very impatient, very impatient. If they think the guy in front of them is taking too long to pass the other guy, and they want to pass, and they want to go faster, they won't just patiently wait like, you know, people do in Canada. No, they'll get, like, within six inches of their bumper and start flashing their high beams at the guy in four kilometers telling him to go to the left on i-40 east i-24 east and then when they get past the guy finally they hang their fingers out the window and honk and cut the guy off and then you know brake check the, i'm not saying everybody's like this i'm not it's not like that at all but i've seen that three times today already and that's more than i've seen in the last six months back home notice that a little bit more aggressive you got to be a little bit more defensive driving here people are all in a hurry they're all very impatient and they're all I shouldn't say all I'm generalizing again I'm sorry mostly good people there's a lot of entitled people on the roads here who think that uh, everybody should part the way and make way for them right and I'm not trying to be mean but even the people who live down here you know who I'm talking about right I'm not talking about you you know who I'm talking about. Like they, they think that the road was built specifically just for them. And how dare you be in their way? And, you know, I complain about that kind of stuff all the time, too. I'm like, oh, how dare you be in my way? But I'm sort of joking. I'm joking, right? You still got to be patient on the road. Like, not everyone wants to drive as fast as you want to drive. You know? Sometimes you got to wait for people to take a long time to pass. Or sometimes things just don't go your way. Whatever, right? But, uh... Not nearly everybody, but I see a lot more impatience and road rage and stuff. But, uh, you know, that you do find that everywhere. You do find it everywhere. But, uh, it still feels so good to be back down here. You know, all you guys down here in the south, such good people. Good people are everywhere, too. Man, I gotta be careful what I say because. You know, everyone's going to be offended by something, right? I don't want to offend anybody. But my own personal bias is I like it down here. Because I think the people are really nice. The weather is really nice. You go to the towns and the cities, they're really nice. There's palm trees. That's a huge point that they have for them. Man, that could be 10 points for them. Anywhere with palm trees, I like. No palm trees around our house. But that's good. That's good. That's why nobody lives there. Nobody wants to live where we live. That way, we get more peace and quiet. Keeps the riffraff out too, right? Nobody wants to live in Manitoba. It's cold there. It's cold, everything. There's nothing going for it. We got the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, sure. That's awesome. Winnipeg's kind of a dirty city. Sorry, Winnipeg. It's true. Nobody really wants to live there. Anyone who's in Manitoba is there because they were born there. And anyone who came to Manitoba or comes to Manitoba comes there because there's a good job for them there. All right, they're there to work. They don't come there to just, you know, be a bum. <laughs> Everybody who's there is working. Which makes it a pretty safe place to live, right? Because there's nobody really, not a lot of uh, people with nothing to do compared to other warmer climate places. You yeah, know what I'm talking about? I'm blabbering on about nothing. I'm excited to be in Nashville. I'm so glad no one's hit me yet because, geez, the way some of these people drive freaks me out. What is that guy? The tow truck's just gonna drive right. That was a lane dive. Okay. That's cool. That was an okay lane dive. Like, all right, we're going slow. I had a
had a, I had a guy lane dive in front of me just uh, like about a half hour ago. He was about to miss his exit, and he was in the left lane, and I was occupying the right lane. And I had no idea he wanted to come into my lane because he didn't have a signal on, so I was just cruising along. And suddenly, last second, no signals, no nothing, just within like two feet of my bumper, just right in front of me out the exit. And so I honk at him, obviously, right? Because I thought maybe he didn't see me here. I don't know, maybe he's blind. And I should let him know that, hey, there's something here. Like, don't run into me. Gives me the bird. As if it's my fault. I guess that's what sort of sparked this whole... I'm like, that's enough. I've seen enough of this for one day. I've, I haven't even driven... I've, I've only been on the road two hours today. I'm already all like, wow, you guys are aggressive. Man. Why so, why so angry? <laughs> Why so angry? Patience. Patience. Okay, we're all trying to get somewhere. We're all trying to get there alive if possible. Just patience. Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've always wondered how they got that name. I should look that up once. Chattanooga. It's been a while since we've been here. I bought a cell phone here once. A Verizon cell phone. That was before, uh, any cell phone providers in Canada offered US plans. Now I just have one cell phone, I use it on both sides of the border. I have a Canada plan and a US plan all in one. So when I'm in the US, it's a US phone. When I'm in Canada, it's a Canadian phone. I can just use the same one. It used to be you'd have to have a different phone for both sides of the border. So you'd always have to have a different phone number depending on which side of the border you were on. That was always annoying. I got a pretty big plan too. I got the biggest one you can possibly get. I got like 60 gigs a month. But uh, that's because I do YouTube, right? So a lot of my YouTube, I don't upload a lot, but sometimes I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi and I need to get a video uploaded for you guys. And I just tether my phone to it and upload it with that. But I usually don't go anywhere near. I usually use about 40 gigs a month. That's still quite a bit for a lot of people. But uh, I've been happy with my plan. I pay... Well, me and Brit's plans are together, and we pay about, uh, what is it, a little over, about 300 bucks a month for our phones. And that's mostly all mine. <laughs> I think her phone bill is like 90 bucks a month, and then the rest is all mine. My phone's expensive. But uh, I need it for my job. I get a little bit of reimbursement for it, but it's, it's a necessity. I mean, maybe that big of a data plan might not be a necessity, but I want to have a little bit of fun, right? I want to add a little bit in there for me. Because if you go over on your data, oh yeah, I've had a cell phone bill as high as $600 once because I, I didn't realize I'd gone over on my data and they didn't tell me, I don't think. So it's much cheaper just to pay for lots of data and not go over than to, you know, try to save money and then go over on your data. I think you know what I mean. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Next stop is Georgia. West I-285 by Face and then keep to the left in 580 meters. Atlanta, Georgia. And we're rolling through all of our, all the cities of our old friends here, eh? Wait, do I gotta, I wanna go west. Oh, so I gotta be in that lane, don't I? And this truck just keeps slowing down with me. In 400 meters, keep to the left on I-285 by west and then keep to the left in 410 meters. In 300 meters, keep to the left on I-285 by west. Okay, you did want me to keep left. Right, Karen? This looks familiar to me. You want to go around the west side of Atlanta. We're going through at night, so the traffic shouldn't be that bad. We should be able to just sail right through. Man, I used to be through here, what, almost every week it felt like for a long, for years. Years. It was probably more like every second week or so, but twice a month, two or three times. But yeah, now it's been, since I've been in Atlanta, Georgia, when was the last time I was pulling a van trailer then? Continue so it would have been road for 31 kilometers. almost two years ago, if not about two years ago. So how have you guys been doing down here? I see the place hasn't burnt down. That's good. Good. Good to see. Been, take care of, been taking care of things. 
city still looks beautiful. I had forgotten about this already. We're about to go underneath the Atlanta International Airport. This is a runway that we're going on. Like jets land on top of this. We go right under it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I gotta make a right turn up ahead. It's just a huge tunnel. It's pretty neat. I need to get in that lane, people. Thank you very much. In one kilometer. Thank you very keep much. To the right on by 75 and then keep to the right at 1.3 kilometers. Doing my best here, Karen. 